Now, when we consider nuclear waste, we're going to talk mostly about the nuclear waste that's generated in the nuclear power plant. And remember, over here is where the fuel is in the nuclear power plant in the reactor vessel in these fuel rods. Okay, and so it's the uranium 235 that's undergoing fission. And the fission products, uh, there's about 30, 15 of which are medium or long, long lived. Um, radioactive isotopes themselves. So the fuel, uranium-235, is an unstable isotope. Uranium-238, which is 97% uh, of the pellet, is also a, an unstable isotope. And then the fission products um, are also unstable. So um, that's the problem with the nuclear waste. It's the spent fuel. And uh, where do we put them? And this is the, the power plant. And at this point in time, in most power plants, there's just a pool uh, somewhere within the power plant facility that contains all of the spent fuel rods and it's kept underwater to keep them cool. That's a problem. Okay. Whoops. So nuclear power could be the answer to all of our energy problems um, in the world. It's clean other than the nuclear waste. Clean meaning that it does not produce air pollution. So it's a relatively clean way to produce electricity other than the fact that you have to deal with um, the, the nuclear fuel that's spent that you're no longer using. And so people are concerned um, basically for two reasons about using nuclear power. One is that there could be some sort of a disaster that happens and um, it could happen and it did happen in Chernobyl and so uh, but mostly that was operator error and it was in a in, in um, the Soviet Union at the time, uh, there just didn't take as many cautions as far as uh, worker safety. But now it actually did happen in a safe reactor in Fukushima. Also, depositing the waste could be dangerous. And as it turns out, keeping the waste on site, which is what we really, uh, what is what most power plants do right now, is dangerous. And that also we have evidence of that from the recent nuclear disaster of Fukushima. So nuclear power was starting to come back in vogue because it had been since the 80s, since the last major um, accident at Chernobyl. But now in 2011, with the recent um, nuclear accident as a result of the um, tsunami at the Fukushima power plant in Japan, um, <clears throat> there's new concerns. And so let me show you what happened um, in Japan. There's a New York Times video that you can uh, watch here. Let's see if we can find it. This is Martin Fackler for the New York Times. I'm the Tokyo Bureau Chief. Japan suffered its largest earthquake on historical record today. An 8.8 magnitude earthquake hit off the northern coast. And the quake itself did damage, but even more devastating was the tsunami that the quake unleashed. In some places, there were news reports of a wave more than 25 feet high that swept through entire towns, bulldozing through buildings, and sweeping over cars as they were driving down a highway. The areas that were hit, many of them are very remote, and at this time, it looks like there are at least 200, probably many more deaths, hundreds more missing. Entire swaths of northern Japan are now without power. Up near where the earthquake hit, the largest city in that area is a city called Sendai. The airport there was hit by the tsunami. The runway was covered with water, and the airport terminal was cut off, and inside of it, Okay, so that's the, the end of that little video there. You saw the uh, Fukushima power plant. And, um, <clears throat> and so what's happened there is similar to what happened at Chernobyl in 1986. Um, the difference was in Chernobyl in 1986, it was operator error. And due to operator error, the cooling water <clears throat> that regulated the temperature of the 
fuel cells was disrupted. They were trying to do a test and they messed up the test. And so <clears throat> the um, fuel rods got too hot and it gave off too much heat. And then the, um, the chemicals around the fuel rods and the water actually got so hot that it caught on fire and then caught the, um, the uh, <clears throat> um, other parts of the uh, nuclear re reactor itself on fire and there was an explosion. And this uh, picture here is the uh, nuclear reactor, the housing that was over top of the nuclear reactor. You can see it blew the top right off of it. So um, if it were a, it was a chemical explosion due to too much heat generated by the um, nuclear chain reaction. <clears throat> All right, and so that's, take a look here. This is what the top of the, the, the re re containment vessel looked like. Now let's look at what's going on with the Fukushima power plant. Let's see here. Okay, in this image right here, <clears throat> you can see there's, at the Fukushima power plant, there's six reactors. Um, this was the, what one of the reactors looked like before the earthquake, and this is um, a few days after the earthquake. And you can see the top, whoops, the top was blown off, um, similar to what happened in the Chernobyl situation. And again, it was because uh, when the tsunami hit, <clears throat> the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when the tsunami hit, it knocked the power out at the plant. And even though the nuclear reactors are equipped with, um, you know, um, seismic detectors so that they know when an earthquake is coming. Um, they did detect the earthquake as it was happening. The control rods automatically snapped down in place to um, shut off the nuclear or to try to absorb more of the neutrons, but the cooling water was disrupted because the uh, tsunami flooded out all of the electricity and then the emergency generators were also flooded out. So then the reactors couldn't stay cold even though the, the control rods dropped into place, the cooling water knocked out. Here's reactor two, you can see it's getting ready to blow there on uh, March 15th. There's reactor three, that looks like a lot like the Chernobyl reactor where the whole top, this is before and this is after, was blown off <clears throat> due to a chemical explosion. And this is reactor four, similar deal. And then reactors five and six are still intact. They were able to restore the cooling water to that. It's a different part of the plant. Wasn't damaged as much by the, uh, the tsunami. So you can see there that this is why people are afraid of nuclear um, <clears throat> power plants is because if something um, that's not foreseen happens, such as the tsunami knocking out the uh, backup uh, generators that would have kept the cooling water going otherwise, um, then there was the, <clears throat> excuse me, chemical explosion. Okay. All right. So that's the problem um, with the uh, nuclear power plants. Things happen that you don't expect. The other thing is that the, um, the cooling baths where the spent fuel cells uh, were stored or are stored also um, got too hot and I started giving off steam. Um, the, the, the pools themselves were getting too hot and cracking, water's leaking out, and that water is contaminated with um, nuclear uh, radioisotopes. Okay, and in the case of the fission products in a nuclear reaction, the most troubling radioisotopes um, that are produced in the fission reactions, are, fission reactions is the cesium-137, the iodine-131, and the strontium-9. And the, the iodine-131 is the biggest problem at the beginning, and if you all followed the news at all uh, after the uh, Fukushima uh, power plant <clears throat> uh, accidents with the tsunami, uh, people were worried about the iodine-131. I've already talked about it. It collects in your thyroid, and at the relatively low levels <clears throat> that it was um, being leached out uh, right after the tsunami, um, if people you know could have caused cancer, so they really were avoiding the water and taking iodine pills and whatnot. Um, the cesium has a longer half life, and so does the strontium. And those two um, isotopes are also uh, problematic because they can be taken up into the food uh, supply. They can uh, dissolve in water and then also get into the food chain, get into plants that absorb the water and then people can um, eat them. And the reason why is because if we look at cesium and strontium on the periodic table, cesium is right here and strontium is right here. Cesium, when taken up by plants and animals, acts a lot like sodium and potassium. 
um, which are important um, micronutrients. <clears throat> and strontium, being right under calcium, um, acts like calcium. The body will be fulled and take up the strontium into the bones. And since it has such a long half-life, um, it could, uh, over time, be uh, continually emitting uh, radioactive decay. Um, they're all beta em emitters, and they can all do damage to tissue. So that's why uh, people are worried about uh, nuclear accidents when the spent fuel cells or the fuel rods themselves um, are not um, fully contained and protected. Okay, so um, the consequences of Chernobyl was that people didn't trust the government because they weren't honest with them about what was going on. Um, <clears throat> other, no other nations attempted to downplay the health effects as well. And so public opposition to building uh, additional nuclear power plants increased significantly worldwide. That's why um, all of our power plants in the United States are so old, because once Chernobyl happened, nobody wanted to build any new ones. Now, it's, people were just starting to forget about Chernobyl. It's been about a generation, and now the Fukushima has happened. And so um, all of the same fears are, are coming um, out again and not only that people are taking a closer look now at the nuclear power plants that are older in the United States and realizing oh that they're starting to um, some of the pipes are starting to crack and wear and some of the cooling tanks are starting to crack and wear and small amounts of um, radioisotopes are leaching out into the soils around it so what was really the hope of the future um, to solve our fossil fuel dependence move to nuclear power plants generate electricity relatively cheaply and cleanly um, so that we could power our electric cars and whatnot, um, nuclear may not be our answer unless we can solve these problems. And um, so being the biggest problem, assume that the nuclear reactor isn't compromised and that you fix all those, prob all those problems associated with the nuclear power plants, um, the, the biggest problem still is depositing the waste, which in itself could be dangerous. So the original plan for nuclear power plants was um, the on-site storage where all those pools where the spent fuel cells have been sitting for 20, 30 years in some cases was only supposed to be temporary. Um, and then they were supposed to be moved to a permanent location. But in the U.S., we've not found a permanent location yet. The other plan was to, to, instead of building the types of reactors we have, was to build breeder reactor. And a breeder reactor, <clears throat> the uranium-235, uh, the way it's fashioned, um, produces more uh, fissionable fuel, which is plutonium-239, um, than it uses. So then you're just uh, constantly... Uh, as you're as you're using the uranium-235, you're producing the next fuel that you'll use to keep your reactor going, which is plutonium-239, which can really extend the lifetime of the nuclear reactor and decrease um, the waste. Uh, European countries uh, do use breeder reactors, but in the United States, they were found to be unsafe and no permits were given to build them. Um, <clears throat> so in the U.S., there's only two options for the spent nuclear fuel, and that's near-surface storage or geological depositories. Um, and the types of, of waste that we have is low-level waste and high-level waste. Low-level waste is the kind of waste, there's no problem with it. It's relatively short half-lives, very, very low concentrations. It can be buried in barrels um, at certain locations. And within a, a very short amount of time, it's, it's no longer giving off enough radioactivity to be dangerous. But the high-level waste is our problem. The high-level waste is the waste that comes from um, nuclear weapons and nuclear power plants. So... Um, there's basically two options. Uh, one is the storage near the surface, on or near the surface, and the other is called a geological repository. Um, and then there's decisions to be made. Um, should, the, should there be uh, you know, places spread out all over the United States uh, where you distribute it, or should it be centralized? And there's pros and cons for each, each type. If it's distributed all over the place, you have to move it around. And it takes more money to manage all those different sites. If it's centralized, then it could be compromised by a terrorist attack or there's just more bad stuff in one place. So um, it's pretty feasible. The problem is um, it ha there have to ha be continually committed, which means you have to have money for the next, you know, 500 years, 1,000 years to make sure that these near-surface storage areas will be um, well-maintained 
and that people cannot get near them. Um, the other option is this geological repository. That means bury it deep down in the ground somewhere. Um, and you can have open ones where you can get in and check on it or sealed where you never um, put it in there, seal it up, and never go back and check on it again. And um, this, 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 this could be an irreversible uh, type of a storage situation. So once it's there, it's going to be there forever. And in the United States, we did have one plan for a, a permanent geological repository um, in the Yucca Mountains in Nevada. This is the state of Nevada, and this is where the Yucca Mountains are. And the um, United States government made the decision to dig a tunnel. It's a very stable geological area, and there's not a lot of groundwater anywhere near this. It's very dry. It's near deserts. It's already um, places that the military owns for weapons testing and whatnot. And uh, so the United States government built this giant tunnel, very, very expensive um, project um, to be a place for permanent storage for all of our nuclear waste. Um, the problem is that um, the uh, states that have to allow the nuclear materials to be transported across them via truck or rail uh, never gave the permits for these um, nuclear waste materials to be um, transported. And as it is, there's so much nuclear waste piling up everywhere. This particular tunnel would be filled up um, within like a year of now, given the projected um, production of nuclear waste materials. Uh, but it's just been, um, uh, it's still not used. It's still empty um, because we can't get the, the nuclear materials transported there. Okay, so the nuclear situation in the United States is still not resolved. Although there are a lot of nuclear power plants, um, including in Texas, um, <clears throat> They're nearing the end of their lifetime, and so uh, there's no new permits to build new ones. Um, people are taking a closer look now at our power plants, uh, re recognizing that they're going to need a lot of maintenance. Um, they're thinking about the ongoing problem of storage. If we build new power plants, we still have not resolved the storage issue. And um, the th plan of uh, what they thought was that it would just extend the lifetime and kind of relax the restrictions around power plants such that they just can keep working longer, the nuclear power plants. But um, now people are reconsidering that given the situation in the Fukushima, uh, Japan. So all of the biggest problem then really with the nuclear power plants is the nuclear waste and what we're going to do with it. Um, there's no long-term storage uh, solution um, in the United States right now. Now we'll take a look uh, as we move along through the semester why nuclear power would be better, for example, than fossil fuels because there are issues with fossil fuels. There's issues with getting coal. It's dangerous. And there's issues with uh, climate change because of all of the fossil fuels that we're burning. So at the end of the day, we have to uh, weigh the pros and cons as which is um, the better situation a nuclear or fossil fuels. We'll talk about that later in the semester and we'll wrap this um, unit up with a discussion on nuclear weapons next.